everybody, it's Max Thomas here again from Ageless Tours. I'm currently in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia at uh, FMIMT Specialist Clinic. Today I have the very uh, wonderful privilege of having two professors sitting with me and I'm going to interview them today. I want to talk about some of the services that are available here. And uh, today I'd like to introduce Professor Fred Fandrich from Kiel in Germany. Welcome Professor. Hello. And also Professor Amin, who is yes. also a local here in KL in Malaysia. So yes. welcome to both of you. Thank you. Uh, I just have to say that I could read out a lot of things about these two gentlemen and give you an idea of all of the awards and wonderful things that they've done, but that would take far too long. So I decided at the end of this video I'll put it in the end and if anyone wants to go and check <laughs> out all your credentials they can read it later. So gentlemen, I'd like to start I think with you Professor Fandrich and I'd like to say that the clinic here in Malaysia, cutting edge, we're talking about processes that may not be in mainstream medicine all the way, but it's the new and exciting science that comes to help to prevent or to mitigate the risk of getting chronic diseases and also dealing with it if you've already got it. And particularly, you know, your experience with stem cells and also monocytes. And so I think it would be really good to start the interview if you could just explain to everybody what the difference is. <laughs> well, the monocytes at the end of the day derives from stem cell, okay? So we, we differentiate in medicine stem cells and somatic cells. Stem cells are defined by two characteristics. They can basically replicate unlimited and they can produce by one division step one differentiated cell and one stem cell again. So that's how they keep the pool of stem cells. That's, that's unique for stem cells, this rep, sort of replication. Yep. Um, we call it asymmetric division. And, and monocytes cannot replicate. They are a type of a white blood cell, which long was thought is a immune cell, but, and now this is the interesting part, they have a uh, a diversity and plasticity uh, that they can divert first of all in two different immune cells um, they are either activated or deactivated monocytes and um, the deactivated macrophages which derive from a naive monocyte they are anti-inflammatory they suppress immune reaction the activated macrophages which we also call M1 polarized in comparison to the M2, the activated ones, they, we, those we need for acute uh, risks like bacterial viral infection. Uh, they recognize very fast what's going on in the body and then they alarm the specific immune cells to come in and to clear an infection. Right. And, but it's kind of like the messenger. Right, but, but uh, look, this, this is um, the problem. In, in some instances, this activation goes on and goes on and cannot be rebalanced because there's a lack of deactivating anti-inflammatory macrophages which keep the balance. So if such a chronic ongoing immune activation is happening, that can cause chronic disease. So it was our intention to, to have a methodology to produce from the patient's own monocytes this population of deactivated immunosuppressant monocytes which can rebalance chronic inflammation in the body. So from a layman's point of view, could I almost term it as that you take from the individual person, so therefore you're going to use their own uh, product from blood from their own yeah. body, uh, so you don't have any uh, immune rejection or response from that because it's their own cells. But would you say that you are reprogramming these uh, stem cells and monocytes in a way to go and actually do your job, do a specific job? So if you had a particular disease, can you kind of reprogram it and say, go and get the bad guys? Absolutely. I mean, uh, by profession, I'm a, a transplant surgeon. So my interest always was to how to prevent organ rejection. That's how the whole science started, actually. And at some point, we identified this subpopulation of monocytes, which were able to suppress immune rejection. So what we did, also in clinical trials, we took the monocytes from a kidney donor, 
we program them in a, in a way that they gain these anti-inflammatory properties, then we injected those into the recipient. The recipient or the kidney. And seven days later, I did the transplant, the kidney from the donor to the recipient. And apparently, this really triggered a um, immune adaptation that it took extremely low um, immunosuppressive drugs to keep the balance and to avoid kidney So be because you injected that into the patient the, the, the seven days before, it was kind of like the body's own immune system actually already understood that this wasn't a bad correct, thing. Correct, correct. It informed the immune system to cope with this foreign organ coming in. That's incredible. The other thing about this is you think that it's new science, you know, because you know some of our viewers here might not have even heard of this type of treatment before. But in fact, you've been working on this for years, haven't you? Yes, I have. And, and because there's one other important aspect um, to the monocytes, which I came aware of uh, from embryology and studying newts and salamanders. If you can, you can cut off the tail of a salamander and it will regrow, okay? Yeah. And, and what people don't know is that it is the monocyte population at the cut of tail which triggers the repair of the whole tail. And, and this is not because they recruit stem cells to repair, maybe to some extent, but it has been shown that these monocytes can redraw differentiate back into stem cells or precursor mm -hmm. stem cells. So we have identified a methodology to take monocytes to program them over a certain period of time and then they gain stem cell properties again and then you can actually program them to become a hepatocyte, a liver cell or a fat cell or even insulin producing cell. We have so published that. you make them smarter? Um, no. <laughs> Maybe? Uh, that has for me that's a sort of also has to do with re, re, a, reverse aging mm. because is, if you can instigate the formation of new stem cells from old cells, that's a sort of reverse aging. It's kind of the logic, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the aging is that things deteriorate. Yeah. And what you're saying is that it's regenerating. Correct. In a way. So it's kind of like, I'm, I know most people won't believe that this is actually possible, but there's been magnificent strides made in recent years when it comes to regenerative medicine. Absolutely. And I think what you're doing here at the clinic in KL is cutting edge one. I know that you do it to the strictest European standards and from all your scientific research and everything. It's just that it's the cutting edge. We're not talking about something new and unproven. Mm. We're just talking about a new way of thinking about things. Yeah. And that's, I think, the really exciting thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Thank you so much for that. I'd like to, to talk to you, Professor Min. Uh, yes. You're the Director of Medicine here at the clinic in KL. Yeah. And I think people would be really interested to know some of the services that you offer or some of the treatments, go through some of the treatments that you have available in the clinic. Yeah, after hearing Fred, you now realize that there are many cutting edge technology that can be incorporated in our treatment here. Essentially, we are doing integrative medicine and also we are uh, complementing whatever new technologies that we have into the mainstream medicine. And, uh, and we look at a person, a patient, uh, more holistically in terms of looking at overall health, in terms of the environment that predisposes them to uh, diseases, illness, whether acute or chronic, and also the development of cancer. Uh, and we would like to optimize the, pa the persons, sometimes I call the person something a patient, something a normal person is not a patient, yeah? is to optimize a person's health so that they do not uh, fall sick or suffer any of the chronic diseases. And so unfortunately, some patients do come to see us with very chronic diseases, uh, such as uh, Parkinson, uh, multiple myeloma, and a few cancer cases uh, that requires this holistic approach. We approach the patient in a very integrated manner. We have various modalities of treatment, ranging from uh, environmental detoxification, uh, organ and microenvironment modification and optimization uh, such that it is healthy and very adverse to the cancer cells right up to the cellular level as Fred has mentioned that we are looking at um, the function on monocyte how the monocyte helps uh, in terms of uh, being target, uh, targeting the cancer cells and, and there are many other new uh, scientific advancement uh, that is only in the field of research that can be incorporated in the management of the patient so 
our patients when they they come and see us, we uh, we apply this holistic approach in terms of uh, looking at various uh, modalities of treatment that can reduce the inflammation, that can reduce the tumor bulk. And heal. this was one of the things that I was really interested in as I was uh, researching a lot of the the different treatments that you have here. Is one of the key things is that what you do is alkalize the patient when they come in because disease is caused, as we all know, yes. and it's proven, uh, from an acidic environment. Yes. And one of the things I love about it here is it's almost before you start any treatment is you have to get the patient well yeah. within themselves, get the environment right yes. so that the treatments can actually work. Yes. And what amazes me is sometimes mainstream forget about getting the patient in the right environment yes. before they start the treatment. Yes. And it's kind of like a waste of time. Yeah, really. I think the acclimatization of the, uh, the patients uh, and also the microenvironment is very important. We have heard about people uh, achieving their acclimacy by, by food, for example, and also by infusion or by drinking alkaline water. But what we have here, we... We, we are ensuring that the microenvironment at the cellular level is alkaline and it's not acidic and that will allow uh, all the modalities of treatment to work better. Yeah, uh, so you're giving it the best opportunity. Yes, so it has at the to cellular be the, level. <laughs> yeah, 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 but it's got to be in the right environment. Yes. That's, that's well, what well, I like if, about if it. If Amin says at the cellular level, this is the important statement yeah. because uh, if you drink alkalic water, it will be neutralized in the kidney within 30 minutes and only a very small quantum of, of your alkalines will go into the tissue. But it is in the tissue where you need actually to rebalance the acidity because the more acidity is in the tissue, the less your stem cells can repair. Yeah. So that, that's an important thing. And for instance, in cancer therapy, it has been recently published um, very, very convincingly that the environment in a cancer is acid. And that prevents chemotherapy to work efficacy, uh, efficiently in, in the, on the tumor cells. And also it, it protects the tumor against immune attack. So the moment you balance the uh, microenvironment, you at the same time um, strengthen the chemotherapeutic approach and the immune the, your immune cells to attack the tumor. So it's a combination really, yeah. isn't it? It, it is. It's, it's actually, you know, and I like it's the holistic approach to it as well, yeah. which to me makes logical sense. Get the person's body in its optimum state yeah. to help fight it. Yeah. And I think the other thing that's really important to mention here in the clinic is, yes, you've got people that come to you that are already have chronic, chronic illnesses yeah. um, and, and you have treatments for that. But it's also about trying to, uh, I won't use the word prevent, but what, mitigate or yeah. to lessen the risk yeah. of getting a chronic disease. Yeah. That's yeah. what you also work on. Right. Yes. It's been said that the best way to treat a disease is not to get it. Yeah, well, they, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's so logical, but yeah. yeah. So you have to enhance your, your health. You, you might think that you are healthy, but you should feel uh, what else that what else that can be done to optimize your health and once you start having this feeling and know that you've got so much more energy than what you thought you have then you realize that oh there's a lot of modalities that can enhance our health yes for example sleeping for example if you have a good sleep then you'll be much better the following day similarly uh, in terms of the infusion that we give you the minerals the vitamins and and uh, the, the other uh, supplements and and other cellular things that we can now give you to enhance your health and, and enhance the repair and uh, if it's not too, too much to say to delay the process of aging uh, and, and cell death uh, aging is cell death aging is inflammation so if you manage to uh, reduce the inflammatory processes in your body and that, that leads to cell damage and chronic diseases then you are actually uh, prolonging, prolong, prolonging your health and, and, uh, and reducing the risk of diseases and cancer well, and I think this is so important for us in a healthy environment. As you say, the best, the best defense is not to actually get it in the yes. first place. I like that. Uh, but then, so that's fantastic. You can do that. I think one of the keys that I'm interested in is that you can do a DNA test yeah. on people before they've got any disease mm -hmm. or that they know of, and that you can actually highlight what the potential, maybe what their DNA says that they have a propensity to get at some yes. stage in their life. Yes. 
So once again, I think this is so exciting that yes. you're able to go and do a DNA test and then you know, a few days later, and you can explain that, uh, you can get it back and say, okay, well, you have to be careful about this or you have to be careful. And then I believe yes. you can um, target the treatment Yes. that you offer here, yes. where we're trying to prevent you getting those diseases in the first yes. place. But it's not done with kind of throwing a dart at the board yes. and hoping yeah. it's actually done by science. Yes. We have advanced so much that in terms of uh, uh, the genetic polymorphism of various uh, metabolic pathways, we know how you actually metabolize certain of your toxic, uh, toxic uh, materials in after metabolism. For example, your estrogen metabolism among the, the women who are prone to have breast cancer. And that has been plot out, plotted out very clearly. And, and, uh, and the risk has been calculated in terms of uh, many other diseases too. For example, the risk of hypercholesterol, the risk of hypertension, and also uh, uh, among the normal people. We, we know now, we know the genetic polymorphism of your, your makeup in terms of your response to stress. Uh, to exercise, whether you are you are a marathon runner or you are a hundred meter sprinter, uh, this this will uh, allow us to understand you better in terms of how you will respond to certain stresses, to certain uh, even medication, uh, how you metabolize them. And uh, this information many many years ago used to be among the scientists and not being taken to the clinical side. But now we, we are using it clinically because there are ways and means of uh, using this information to make a difference for the patient. So you can identify things. Yes. You can identify risk factors, yeah. really. Is what yeah, that, that, that's obesity. one thing, but yeah. we, the, the methods Armin mentioned are, are giving us uh, the information to stratify and uh, customize uh, a treatment which yeah. is really individual uh, personalized for the patient. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's a good thing. That's that's I think that's the key. Everybody's yeah. different. Yeah. You yeah. know, everybody reacts differently to 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 their whole yeah. environment. Yeah. I think that's great, you know, and we can talk about the way that we can um, lessen the risk mm. for people contracting these uh, mm. uh, diseases and illnesses. But what about the people that have already got them? Yeah. What about the people that already have serious illnesses? Yeah. What can we do to help them? Yeah, we, we, we often start with trying to optimize whatever health, whatever system, healthy system that can be enhanced further in terms of optimizing their energy level. And, uh, and uh, then we can focus to the organ and organ system that is at fault. But we can't run away from the fact that nowadays our technology allows us to ensure the health at a cellular level. And this is what we are doing in terms of the immunological, uh, immunological uh, capability of, of your immune system to defend and also to stimulate your immune system to enhance your, your, your ability to confront diseases, illnesses. And uh, the, the, once you have the chronic uh, disease, we will do, again, the same modalities in terms of uh, ensuring you have a, a non-acidic environment. We can detoxify them. Uh, we will also provide immunological defense in terms of giving them gut, microflora, gut micro, uh, microbiota, microbiota to improve on the gut leakage because you have to stop the entry point of all these toxins and diseases. And also we, we will offer them other modalities of treatment uh, besides uh, beside those, uh, for example, in terms of we also do some uh, laser treatment. Uh, we also look at uh, what we call this nutrition. Yeah, we look at their lifestyle. All these have have accumulated over the years and result in the uh, disease manifestation. And uh, we will advise them on, on all these uh, areas uh, such that they will adopt or revert back to a more healthy uh, lifestyle. And uh, also, I forgot to mention about how important is it to optimize their hormone, uh, which is. Uh, which is uh, and their neurotransmitters, which act as a communication between all the organ and organ system and between the cell and the cell system. Uh, so these are the multiple modalities of approach that we do. And, uh, and believe me, you have to do this approach because they need to work synergistically. And uh, the current approach of dissecting a person into various system and, and as though a person only suffers cardiac problem without involving the liver or the kidney 
it's very artificial because we function as a human being and all the cells are in communication and, and talking with each other. With, with each other, yeah. yeah. Let, yeah. Me, let me just elaborate f with two things. Uh, I, I would say that our concept is a holistic approach, as Amin said, but we, we really take the effort to look at the cause of a disease. We, we, we don't want to treat a symptom because only if you eradicate the, 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 the origin uh, of a disease, then, then you can cure a patient. Mm -hmm. And I give you a very good example. In, um, it has been published in Nature a few years ago that um, the most malign tumor in the human body is the glioblastoma, a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. And um, people found out that in more than 90%, the cancer stem cell, which triggers uh, the, the tumor formation, is contaminated with a virus cytomegalovirus. So, if you treat uh, the patient with a peptide which will elicit a specific immune response against this virus, you can really eradicate the cancer stem cell. And that's the mm. only way to cure these patients. Mm. And in this publication, it was mentioned those uh, patients who had been treated simultaneously by affecting the immune system in a way that it killed the virus, they had survival long-term survival, which is absolute a rarity in this sort of tumor. Mm. So that shows that, that you have to focus yeah. on the origin of origin. the disease. Yeah. What the actually issue. caused it in the beginning. Right. Yeah, yeah and focusing on that, I, I think that's, that's the really exciting thing here. And of course, we have to understand that there are some, some diseases and, and, and some people have been through uh, tough treatments and chemotherapy and all mm. sorts of things. And it's not only about trying to, to, to find a cure. There are some things that we'd all love to say yeah. it's, that's fantastic, yeah. but that's not necessarily the reality. Yeah. But in those cases, though, it's very important to try and give a quality of life yeah. or Correct. to even extend the life. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that you, know, you can focus on that with your treatments as well. Yes. Uh, certainly, uh, when I first, uh, every, almost every patient that I see, uh, every condition that we see, we have already missed the boat. I mean, it has happened maybe one week ago, one month ago, or many, many years ago. So we will try to repair the damage as much as possible, but it's also to, good to emphasize to the patient that we are actually treating their future. Uh, for example, a person who is 60 years old, he has got, according to calculation, actuarial calculation, he has maybe about maybe 22 more years to live. Yeah, so we have to impress upon the patient that what, what will happen in these 22 years? What has happened before, we will try as much as possible to repair. And that is why it is much more interesting to treat a healthy person yeah. to prevent it from getting diseases. So uh, at that point in time, we have to realize the, the, the causative factor that leads to the disease. Of course, there is a small component of genetic predisposition, but still, in terms of the nutrition and the lifestyle of the patient, it's very important. And uh, we have to deal the macro environment in terms of how he carries himself every day. I mean. He is exposing himself to all this uh, risk, stress, toxin, uh, the externally, and also the food that they are taking, uh, the, 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 the sugar in the blood, which is, uh, which is a poison, actually, uh, in terms of uh, leading to diabetes, the metabolic diseases, uh, obesity. So we have to handle that uh, to ensure that the root cause, the root cause is actually is not three diseases. For example, obesity, hypertension, diabetes, they are not three diseases. These are one metabolic disease uh, which is caused by the cell which has uh, gone, uh, I don't say crazy, in terms, of, in terms of metabolic processes in the cells. Therefore, we, we have to go back to the cell to find out the root cause. Why is, it, why is the sugar metabolism not right? Why is the uh, cholesterol metabolism uh, is, 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 has gone haywire, you know? And, uh, but I, 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 in my heart, I believe that it has got close relationship with weight and obesity that leads to all this problem. And uh, we have to manage the weight. We cannot just treat diabetes without focusing on the weight. And yet, most doctors will advise the patient to reduce weight, to exercise, to reduce the sugar. But what specifically, what specifically are they doing to address the issue of the weight and the weight gain? Well, that's exactly right. I mean, if we think about the importance of the gut, microbiome when it comes to not only your mental health and how your hormones operate in your body and all of the other your immune system and everything 
that it, it, it's caused by that. If you don't get the gut bacteria well, you can't lose the weight. Yes. It doesn't matter how much you starve yeah. yourself. Very you know, true. so it's it's these things that that that's why I'm so excited is because it's the connection you make mm. to all the logical things. Yes. You know, if if it's kind of like we're playing an orchestra, <coughs> yeah. you know, your body yeah. is a is an orchestra and if there's one instrument that doesn't sound quite right, yeah. it's affecting the others. Yes. No, and and I want to to contribute here that um, I'm absolutely convinced that we have organic material medication supplements we can use now which are affordable for everyone okay. um, and by changing the lifestyle and um, adjusting our diet yes. in combination with this formula of supplements you can activate telomerase which means you can prolong stem cell uh, life and induce more stem cells. Mm. You can protect from DNA damage. Mm. You can reverse mitochondrial disease mm. in the cell. Mm -hmm. And by that, if you start now, I, I give you, I promise you, you will live 10, 15 years longer by doing that. But we just don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it, in actual fact, I often refer to it when I explain this to other people. Mm. I say it's kind of like we've been taken down a path yeah. in the last 50 or 60 years of modern medicine yeah. where it's all about the symptom and I'm going to say maybe the money too that's yeah. involved in not actually fixing the problem. Yeah. But what I like about the regenerative medicine, to me, it makes sense getting yeah. the body healthy, getting the body, mm -hmm. what we through nature has provided to us. Mm -hmm. What you're saying, Professor, is the fact that if we look at what's being given to us in our environment, mm -hmm. that there are things out there to fix yeah. Very easily, yeah. So we don't have to create these things. I give you a very, very, one of the most um, critical compounds we, we produce in ourselves and which we take are so-called advanced glycation end products. These are oxidized sugars or, or lipids, right? Now, for everyone to understand, if you take a potato and you boil it, from 100 gram potato, you produce seven units of AGEs. If you take the same amount of potato, 100 gram, and prepare French fries from that, you, pro you, you generate 1,500 AGEs. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> And what do people eat? They yeah. eat French fries. French fries. Yeah. Okay, the same is for grilled yeah. and fried, and any fried product. Yeah. So it's up to us as well to, uh, to have a look on what we take. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. how we take very it, that's, that's, yeah. that's right. Actually, nutrition plays a very important component in uh, the healing process. And uh, in fact, calorie restriction is the only uh, evidence that have shown to prolong the life of uh, whether you're an earthworm or you're a human being. And, uh, and lately, uh, the trend is to have intermittent fasting. And uh, we have got very good results in certain patients, uh, diabetic especially. And sometimes the logic is so obvious and, and people trying to lose weight. And I always tell my patient, how can you lose weight if you don't want to feel hungry? And intermittent fasting just does that. You know, you only feel hungry when there's no more insulin in your blood. And, and this is when the body starts utilizing other forms of energy and your stored fat what you have in the abdomen and your belly will start, will start to burn. Uh, otherwise, if you don't reach a state of hunger, not to say extreme hunger, but most of us feel that we eat uh, just for, the, for, for, for satisfaction without feeling hungry, without, be, be, not because of hungry. It's, yeah? it's actually a habit. Yeah. It's a habit now. You it's know, a cultural, we're, social... <laughs> we, we've been told that it's three meals a day. Yeah. And, and a snack in the morning and a snack in the afternoon. An yeah. actual fact. That goes against our history. Yes. If you think of us, if we go back to Paleolithic times or whatever, yeah. is there wasn't a 7-Eleven down on the corner. <laughs> no. uh, you didn't come home and open the refrigerator yeah. and have all of this food okay. there. So as we were saying, um, you know, it's so important to, to get the whole holistic approach, which is, I love that word, but the holistic approach that you take in the clinic about trying to get the patient well again. I want to concentrate a little bit on people that have already got chronic illnesses. So mainstream medicine may have said to them that there's not really too many options left to treat you, to help you with the symptoms. Mm. Can you please explain a little bit about that there are options, that they do have a way forward, we can offer you something to, to lessen or make your quality of life better? Yeah. 
most of us are strong believer in mainstream medicine. We are very evidence-based, but the point is that now there are other complementary approaches that we can use and, uh, and uh, enhance the healing process. And uh, most of the diseases that we see is due to inflammatory process. Aging is an inflammation process. So if we can reduce the inflammation, uh, we can look at other uh, modalities of reducing inflammation, modalities of reducing inflammation such as even the nutrition, yeah? Uh, stress, this all leads to inflammation and chronic diseases. Inflammation is good when it is acute for healing, but if the, if the healing is incomplete and goes into chronic phase, then it becomes a disease. So, uh, we can help these people into lessening their, their, their pain, their suffering by trying to improve on the quality of life. Uh, but, uh, if if they, they come early, I think there's a possibility of reversing many of these conditions. See, this is the part that I'm interested yeah. in. We're not just talking about making a better quality of life, but we're yeah. talking, you've actually got results from people where you've reversed some of the symptoms yes. that they have been experienced with chronic disease. Yes. I think this is really important to get that point yeah. across. Yeah, the clue is the inflammation, and we have a couple of tools which we look at to reverse inflammation and thereby we reverse aging as well. Yeah, this now, is now, the bit I, I like. just want to summarize microbiome balancing, hormone balancing, detox from he toxic heavy metals, um, normalizing acidity, um, oxygen treatment, this and laser treatment. These are only a few which, which we offer here as a panel which, which allows us to reverse inflammation. Yeah. This is, and the thing there I think that we really need to concentrate on is that not only could we lessen some of the symptoms and maybe take away some of the pain or mm -hmm. maybe even get them to reduce some of the medication that they might be on mm -hmm. to because we're going to get, we're dealing with the root cause rather than the symptom. Yes. But it's the anti-aging part of it as well. That's yeah. what I like. I mean, it's kind, of like, <laughs> it's kind of like, would you like fries with that? Except I know that we're not having fr <laughs> French fries anymore. Yeah. Apart from that, but you know what I mean. It's kind yeah. of like... Fix this problem, and then here's the benefit. Yeah, yeah. bonus. Yeah, so I think it's really fantastic that uh, that people have an opportunity. I think one of the big things when it comes to illness, and certainly in my experience with different family members that have that have suffered things over the years, is that it's um, it can be a lonely place where you're out there and you feel that there's nothing I can do, or that people can't help me, or am I going to feel like this for the rest of my life, yeah. and or is my life been shortened? Yeah. You know, all of these things, it's a, it's a terrible, depressing yeah. um, outlook. Mm -hmm. And what I love about the services that you offer here, uh, apart from the fact that everyone gets to come <coughs> on a tropical holiday yeah. uh, and come up and enjoy beautiful Malaysia and the food and all those sorts of Me things, too. the thing is that people have an opportunity to m minimize, <coughs> minimize the risk of contracting one of these diseases yeah. if they start early enough. Reversing the aging process, my favourite, yeah. um, and the people with chronic disease already lessening the yeah. symptoms and in some mm. cases even reversing yeah. some of the symptoms. Yeah. I think if you put that all together, it's something that's really exciting for everybody. Yeah. And uh, gentlemen, yeah. I have to say that I love what you're doing. Thank I think you. that more people need to be made aware of what is, is available. Yeah. Uh, the science that you've put behind it, the years of research, we sit here in an interview and just quickly talk about a few things and yeah. it seems like you almost just, yeah. you know, it just happened. Yeah. But of course we know that there's been a lot of hard work, uh, yeah. scientific research that's gone into all of this. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about uh, opening this up and showing people that there is a way forward. Yes. And of course, people, you can get more information on the website. Um, we can also answer any questions that you might have specific to your condition, your problem. I can come back to the professors, uh, pass on any difficult questions that I don't know the answers to. Yeah. Um, once again, gentlemen, I'd like to say thank you very much for inviting me to, to your clinic today here in Kuala Lumpur. Okay. And I wish you uh, great luck, and I know that you're very passionate about helping people. And uh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.